Your book has been selling extremely well. Words? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We, we always keep a good stack of misadventures of an awkward black girl. <laughs> Lamar Park is one of the most special neighborhoods. It is one of the rare blocks in Los Angeles that features Black-owned businesses, and Esalon Books is one of those. Esalon Books was founded by three guys who started a book cart. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm good, Issa, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Last time I saw you was in, I want to say, 2015. For the book signing, and then you walked by the store when you did the filming here. I that sure That was did. pretty exciting. That's right. Since the 90s, it has served as an event space for people to gather, for authors to give talks and readers to have access to those authors. We started on weekends and we just wanted to be able to provide books by black people being sold by black people by a black company. And then it just kept growing. Your store has so many moments connecting black people, connecting creatives. I think of Ian Van Zant, who we had a couple years ago, and, and when she walked in, it was a packed audience, and she said, I'm home, and the audience burst out and clapping, and that was a great feeling. I don't know if you know this, but I was in the process of trying to find a, a collaborator, a showrunner for Insecure. Right after my book signing, I met my future showrunner, Prentice Penny, and we talked outside of the bookstore at a, after the signing for like 20 minutes. And we both grew up in the neighborhood. And of course, shooting SOM books in, in that episode that you're referencing was like kind of our homage to like our, us meeting there. I didn't know that, and that's incredible. It means so much that SOM books has found a way to stay open, which is so important during a time where we've seen a lot of racial unrest and uprisings. You've seen people actively seek out Esalon to learn more. You know, we were really scared, you know, how will we survive this? We couldn't let people come in the store. People had to do mail orders, but people rallied to us. George Floyd's death, um, I think people became aware that this happens and it's been happening and people wanted to understand it more. And so for the last three months, we have been very, very busy, people buying books that deal with racism and anti-racism. So when we reopened, we had such a huge response and, and people flooding the store with orders that we had to change the store hours because we got so many online orders. We realized we need more time to work on filling those orders. Well, I'm happy the community is, is showing up as they should. One of the biggest fears we have is that we're going to lose a lot of these Black businesses. And so I think it's so important to support them so that they can stay in the neighborhood. They empower so much of our community. They serve as inspiration. You can't be what you can't see. I can't tell you how much it means to me. I live in the neighborhood. You guys are down the street. I can't imagine my childhood, my adulthood, my career without Esalon Books. So I would love to purchase $5,000 worth of gift cards to donate to local schools and show my appreciation for, for SOM Books. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. And I, I think it's so important because a lot of times kids are not exposed to these books. That's invaluable as a kid, especially when you're in a school system that isn't necessarily providing those books and giving you those materials to read. You have to find them on your own. So your bookstore was just revolutionary in that sense. That would be tremendous. We'd be honored to be a part of that. I appreciate every hour I have spent in that store. I thank Esalon Books for launching my own writing career whether it's my first book or my first TV show. SOM Books is a part of my life and I am so grateful for it. <laughs>